Today's lesson is on tangent lines. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are in the scale before we begin the lesson. If you draw lines that touch a circle at only one point, you've drawn lines that are tangent to the circle. A tangent to a circle is a line in the same plane as the circle that intersects the circle in exactly one point. If you look at line AB, that is a tangent to a circle. The point where the circle and the tangent intersect is the point of tangency. Point B is the point of tangency. Ray BA is a tangent ray, and segment BA is a tangent segment. A radius of a circle and the tangent that intersects the endpoint of the radius on the circle have a special relationship. If a line is tangent to a circle, then the line is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So radius OP is perpendicular to tangent AB. In example one, we will find angle measures. Segment ML and segment MN are tangent to circle O. What is the value of X? Since segment ML is a tangent to circle O, it is perpendicular to radius OL. That means angle L is 90 degrees. Since segment MN is also a tangent to circle O, it is perpendicular to radius ON at point N. That means angle N is also 90 degrees. Since polygon LMNO is a quadrilateral, that means its interior angles have a sum of 360 degrees. So 117 plus 90 degrees plus X degrees plus 90 degrees will equal 360 degrees. Combining like terms, 117, 90, and 90, we get 297 plus X equals 360 degrees. Subtract 297 from both sides, and X equals 63. Pause the video and do you try number one. Segment ED is tangent to circle O. What is the value of X? Since segment ED is a tangent, we know that the radius is going to be perpendicular to the tangent at point D. So angle EDO is 90 degrees. Since the polygon is a triangle, we know the sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees. So we can take 90 plus 38 plus X and it will equal 180. Combining like terms, 90 plus 38 is 128 and we'll add that to X to get 180. Subtract 128 from both sides, and X equals 52. In example two, we will find distance. The CN Tower in Toronto, Canada has an observation deck 447 meters above ground level. Knowing that Earth's radius is about 6,400 kilometers, about how far is the observation deck to the horizon? Let's start by drawing a diagram. Here's the Earth, and the CN Tower, and the Earth's radius. Since the radius is in kilometers, but the height of the tower is in meters, we're going to convert the height of the tower to kilometers as well. There are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. That means the height of the tower is 447 meters divided by 1,000, or 0.447 kilometers. Since we want to know how far the observation deck is to the horizon, let's draw the tangent to the circle from the top of the observation deck to the horizon of the Earth. Since a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency, let's draw in a second radius. We have created a right triangle with the one leg 6,400 kilometers and the hypotenuse 6,400 kilometers plus 0.447 kilometers. We are looking for the length of this leg, which is from the observation tower to the horizon. Since we have a right triangle, and we know the length of two sides, one leg and the hypotenuse, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. We'll use this radius as A, we'll use this X as B, and we'll use the hypotenuse 6400.447 as C. To get X squared alone, we'll subtract 6400 squared from both sides. So X squared will equal 5721 
0.799809. Remember, you have to square both of these numbers before you can subtract them. To get x alone, let's take the square root of both sides. And x equals approximately 75.643. So the observation deck is about 76 kilometers from the horizon. Pause the video and do you try number two. What is the distance to the horizon that a person can see on a clear day from an airplane two miles above Earth? Earth's radius is about 4,000 miles. In the drawing, we have the distance the plane is above Earth, two miles. We have Earth's radius of 4,000 miles. We have a tangent line from the plane to the horizon of Earth. And we have a second radius that is perpendicular at the point of tangency, which is also 4,000 miles. We have created a right triangle with one leg 4,000 and the hypotenuse 4,002. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance from the plane to the horizon. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we see that the distance from the plane to the horizon is about 127 miles. Theorem 12-2 is the converse of Theorem 12-1. We can use it to prove that a line or a segment is tangent to a circle. We can also use it to construct a tangent to a circle. Theorem 12-2 says that if a line in a plane of a circle is perpendicular to the radius at its endpoint on the circle, then the line is tangent to the circle. Since line AB is perpendicular to segment OP, which is the radius of the circle, line AB is tangent to the circle. In example 3, we will find a radius. What is the radius of circle C? Here, segment BA is a tangent to circle C because it is perpendicular to the radius. What we have created is a right triangle with one leg x, the other leg 12, and the hypotenuse 8 plus x. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for x. Let's substitute x in for a. 12 for b, and x plus 8 in for c. If we go ahead and square a, b, and c, we will get x squared plus 144 is equal to x squared plus 16x plus 64. In case you need a reminder on how to get from here to here, let's use the distributive property. x times x is x squared, x times 8 is 8x, 8 times x is 8x, and 8 times 8 is 64. By combining the two middle terms, the like terms, we will get x squared plus 16x plus 64. Now back to our equation, let's go ahead and subtract x squared from both sides. That leaves us with 144 equal to 16x plus 64. If we subtract 64 from both sides, 80 is equal to 16x. Dividing both sides by 16, 5 equals x. So the radius of circle C is 5 units long. Pause the video and do you try number 3. What is the radius of circle O? We notice that we have a right triangle with one leg x, the other leg 10, and the hypotenuse 6 plus x. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem and solve for x. We'll substitute x for a, 10 for b, and x plus 6 in for c. By squaring a, b, and c, we'll get x squared plus 100 equals x squared plus 12x plus 36. We'll subtract x squared from both sides, and 100 equals 12x plus 36. Let's subtract 36 from both sides, and 64 equals 12x. Dividing both sides by 12, 5.3 repeating equals x. So the radius of circle O is approximately 5.3. In example 4, we will identify a tangent. Is segment ML tangent to circle N at point L? Explain. Remember, if segment ML is a tangent, it will be perpendicular to the radius segment LN. If this is a 90 degree angle, 
then we will have a right triangle. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem. 7 squared plus 24 squared should equal 25 squared. Since 49 plus 576 does equal 625, we know that segment NL is perpendicular to segment LM. That means segment ML is a tangent to circle N at point L. Pause the video and do you try number four. Is segment ML tangent to circle N at point L? Explain. If a segment is tangent to a circle, it will be perpendicular to the circle's radius, giving us a right triangle with a 90 degree angle here. So if 4 squared plus 7 squared equals 8 squared, segment ML will be tangent to circle N. Since 16 plus 49 equals 65 and does not equal 64, then segment ML is not perpendicular to the radius of circle N. Therefore, segment ML is not a tangent to circle N. Theorem 12-3 states that if two segments are tangent to a circle from a point outside the circle, then the two segments are congruent. In this figure, the sides of the triangle are tangent to the circle. The circle is inscribed in the triangle. The triangle is circumscribed about the circle. Since each segment is tangent to the circle, we know that these two segments are congruent, these two segments are congruent, and these two segments are congruent. In example 5, we will work with circles inscribed in polygons. Circle N is inscribed in triangle ABC. What is the perimeter of triangle ABC? Since circle O is inscribed in triangle ABC, we know that segment AB, segment BC, and segment CA are all tangents. That means segment DA is congruent to segment AF. We also know that segment FC is congruent to segment CE, and that segment DB is congruent to segment BE. To get the perimeter of a triangle, we need to add the lengths of the sides. Since segment AB is 10 plus 15 centimeters or 25 centimeters long, and segment BC is 15 plus 8 or 23 centimeters long, and segment CA equals 8 plus 10 or 18 centimeters long. So the perimeter of triangle ABC will be the sum of the length of the sides, 25 plus 23 plus 18 centimeters or 66 centimeters. Pause the video and do you try number five. Circle O is inscribed in triangle PQR, which has a perimeter of 88 centimeters. What is the length of segment QY? We know that segments that are tangent to a circle from the same point are congruent. So segment PX is going to be congruent to segment PZ. And segment RZ is congruent to segment RY and segment QX is congruent to segment QY. Since we don't know the length, let's go ahead and use X for both of those lengths. To find the perimeter of the triangle, we need to add the length of segment PQ, segment QR, and segment RP. Since we know the perimeter is 88 centimeters, let's write the equation 15 plus X plus X plus 17 plus 17 plus 15 equals 88. Combining like terms, 15 plus 17 plus 17 plus 15 is 64, and x plus x is 2x. 64 plus 2x has a sum of 88. Let's subtract 64 from both sides, and 2x equals 24. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 12. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions, please be sure to ask me in class. If you're killing the lesson on tangent lines, go ahead and try the challenge. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal and scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale from where you were when we began the lesson? 
don't forget to check your answer from the challenge.